We are recording. All right. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than just this, but I'm just going to draw the triangles again. This is very similar to what we've done already. What have we done so far? We've just done side angle, side and angle, side angle, correct? Okay. It's weird, this book, I've taught out, of, this is my third book, different book that I've used for geometry, I think. And... And I've seen a lot of other books. But this is the only one that does it in these order, this order. They usually do it in another order, but that's all right. No big deal. All right, so let's use my favorite A, B, C, D, E, F again. Just so much easier. I'm trying to think of random letters. All right. You could probably teach this yourself, right? So. This one is the angle angle side postulate, which means which one do you want to which one do you want to make equal? A and what? A and D. A and D. And does it matter which no. angle? Let's just do B and E. B. All right. So we'll do B and E. Now, if this is angle angle side, which side am I not going to pick? Give me letters. Oh, yeah. A, and B. A, B. Don't say A and B. All right? It's what? It's side A, B. It's line segment, right? Or side. You can say side. You can say side A, B or line segment A, B. All right? And what else? D, E. Because if I said that they were equal to each other, then it would be angle, side, angle. All right? But this one has a non-included side, which means it's not between the two angles. See how it's written? It's written so... The side is not in between. If it was, it would be angle, side, angle. But this one is angle, angle, side. So two, two angles and a non-included side. So I could pick from either one of these, right? I could pick this one. What well, would have to be equal over here, that right there. So these two triangles, that's enough to show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Now watch. This says, a, well, I'm not even going to go through that, the, the applying part. Have we done this? Yeah, we've talked about this. Look, if these two angles are equal to these two angles, what must be true about C and F? They got to be equal to each other, right? Because you're taking the same two things away from what? The same two things. No, I'm taking this and this away from what to get this? 180. 180, that's right. Okay, everybody see that? So let's just pretend that this was 50 and this was 30. This is not going to... Eh, it's a lot bigger than that. Let's say this was 70 and this was 30. Okay. Shh. Uh, let's make that bigger than 30. Let's say this was 70 and this was 50. Okay. So if this was 70 and this was 50, how much all together? That's 120, right? And then 180 minus 120 would be what? 60. So that would be 60. Obviously, it's not the scale, but that would be 60 and that would be 60. Agreed? So that means, and let me, I want to see the uh, two angles, one side's opposite. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we can do this. So that means that angle C must equal what? Angle F. So really, Angle, angle, side's kind of not even relevant, <laughs> kind of. Um, because if I have two angles equal to two angles, I could always say that that third angle is equal, couldn't I? And then I could always revert back to one of my old ones, which would be what? Angle, side, angle, all right? So using an angle, angle, side, all that does is just allows us not to have to say anything about the third angle. That's it. Okay, but I could live without angle angle side and still show those triangles congruent to each other because I could have always said, oh, if these two so angles are equal to these two angles, then the third angle must be equal. And then I've got angle side angle. Then I could always go back to one of the older ones. Does that make sense? Okay, so anyway, but it's nice, I guess, sometimes to have an angle angle side. To me, angle angle side is kind of like one of the forgotten congruence theorems, all right? There's another one that we're going to learn. Is it the next lesson? I think it's the next lesson. Let me just double check. I want to see. 
Uh, yes, it is. The next lesson is one that we're going to do that I think is pretty important, but we'll do that in a second. Is what working? The heat is working. The heat, yeah. Heat, heat's working in here, but I know some of the other rooms is not working. Next door. And then 309, I was in 309, and that's really cold in there. I'm like the only room in this half of this hallway that's actually heating up. So count your lucky stars. <laughs> well, well, it was the air conditioner. It's different. Air conditioner and the heat are different. All right, anyway, so that's angle side angle. All right, everybody good with that? Or sorry, angle angle side. Let's do something a little different. We're not going to do a congruence, but it has to do with the congruence of things. No, I said I got a little bit more to do, but that's that's the only congruent triangle congruence thing that we're going to do. Um, okay, this is only dealing with one type of triangle. Actually, let's use this. Let's make a triangle out of it. There we go. Why does that thing keep on popping up? Let's just make it look like this. Okay, so it's not equilateral, is it? Nah. It looks though what? No, nope, it's got an S in it, but it doesn't start with an S. <laughs> this triangle right here. What do you think? What kind of triangle do you think this is? Oh, isosceles. Isosceles. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Now I don't know. Remember, I can't just always go by what it looks like. All right, I got to know some information. So let's say. I knew that this side was equal to this side. Now, what kind of triangle is it? It's isosceles. I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, it's an isosceles triangle. Do you remember how to spell isosceles? Let's spell it. O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E Good. It's isos, right? I-S-O-S, -S, and then the celes, C-E-L-E-S. All right. Like silesium. Silesium, right. And for, well, no, that's an S. <laughs> <laughs> but the, Silesium, I believe, is an element, isn't it? Or it's, shh, guys, it's not third grade. Stop. See, just be nice if we had to have a little bit of a give and take, but that's why I don't do it very often, because it turns into nonsense. No, 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 no. I don't mind you saying stuff every once in a while if I can say something back and then everything's calm. But then you got to do these monkey noises. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I, I don't... Girls are looking at me, and you're nodding. You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, they're just, they're just ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Everybody else, I can see it in their eyes. No, I can see it in their eyes. Everybody is. She's not the only one. I can tell. All the girls are looking at me like, Mr. Hamrick, you're right. Get on their case. All right? Doesn't matter. Logan, knock it off or you're going to leave. All right? That's Logan Hill, by the way. At what time are we? Let's, so does it have a timer thing? About 8 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, so I'll remember that. All right. So uh, what are we doing? Okay, so here's a theorem, and it's called the isosceles triangle theorem. Not much of a stretch, is it? Uh, I'll just use that word right there, isosceles. Isosceles triangle theorem. Here's what it says, and it's pretty basic, and it's very helpful though, very helpful. If you have two sides of a triangle that are equal to each other, meaning it's a what? An isosceles triangle, okay? The theorem says that the angles that are opposite the two equal sides are also equal to each other, all right? So here's, we'll call this ABC, all right? So if side AB is equal to side AC, then the angles that are opposite the equal sides are also equal to each other, all right? So that means angle what? Angle B and angle C are equal to each other, okay? That's what our isosceles theorem set, triangle theorem says. So if the two sides are equal, then the two angles are equal, all right? And which two angles are equal? B and C. We call these the base angles. Remember we talked about isosceles triangle some time ago? We said that these are the legs, this is the vertex angle, this is the base angles. Okay, the base angles would be equal to each other. All right? 
Let's go the other way. I'm not going to redraw this. Just take a wild guess. What if I gave you this information right here? What if I said that this and this were equal to each other? What do you think you could conclude from that? The sides would be equal. Exactly right. So the isosceles triangle theorem says if the sides, I'll just, I'm not writing all the little details. I'm just saying if the two sides are equal, then what? then the angles, the two angles, are equal to each other. Logan, yep. do you need to leave? You were. Absolutely were. I don't know what you call that, but you were absolutely mumbling a bunch of stuff. I couldn't tell what you were saying, but you're disturbing me. So quit disturbing me. So look, if the sides are equal, then the angles are equal. Well, this thing, this next one, we call that, do they call it the converse of it? Let me see. Yep, they do. They call it the converse. of the what? I'll just shorten it, isosceles triangle theorem. The converse means if you have an if-then statement, do you see where you have if and then? The converse is if I switch the if and then, all right? So if I flip-flop the if and the then, what would this be? If what? Angles. If the two angles are equal, then what? Sides. The two sides are equal. I should, probably should put a two in there, but you can do that if you want then the two sides are equal. That's the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Just you switch the if and the then, all right? So if I was given this information, uh, let's do this. Let's say that was five, and I told you that this angle was 30 degrees, and this is 30 degrees, then what could you tell me uh, about that side right there? We'll call it x. What would x be equal to? Be equal to five, okay? And now you know. You might have been able to guess that before you even walked in the door today. All right? You might have been looking at this and you're like, well, that sure looks like it's equal to that. But now we know definitively all right, that if these two base angles are equal, then the two, equals, or then the two sides are going to be equal. Then it's an isosceles triangle, right? You with me? Yeah. So at first, when I just said that the angles were equal, that didn't necessarily tell us it was an isosceles triangle. But knowing the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, now that tells me if these two angles are equal, then these two sides are equal. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. And we're going to use it quite a bit. I mean, that's going to come into play even, um, even uh, later on in the uh, book. This is going to pop up from time to time. All right. So it's, it's something that, that's pretty popular. All right. We've already discussed this before, but... Now we have some, uh, some basis to discuss it. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you know anything about these desktop publishing type programs, but if I hit the corner, watch, if I, if I have my left hand up right here, I'm not touching anything. If I hit that corner, see how I can change the shape of it like this? Everybody see that? Control Z. But if I hit the shift, and then grab the corner, what's it going to do? See, I'm moving it all around, and it keeps it in what? Give me a good word. Do you know that word? starts with a P, but it's not in place. Position? No, this is, uh, remember, I, remember I referred to that angle, angle, angle thing earlier? We're going to talk about things being in proportion. Have you ever heard that before? In proportion? Right, why are you still guessing? I gave you the word. All right. So if I hit the shift key, it keeps it in proportion, which means, all right, it started off as an equilateral triangle. So guess what it is now? It's still what? Equilateral. All right. Now, the first triangle that I had on here is smaller than this one. All right. So the size, the length of the sides are different, but it's still in proportion. It's still equal angular. So anyway, watch. What if I told you this? this and this were equal to each other, okay? Then it's, well, it's equilateral, right, right now, because I told you all the sides were equal. Then what's true about all the angles are equal? Now, I just told you that before, remember that? We, we've had that discussion before, but now that you know the isosceles triangle theorem and the converse, basically the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, now you could do this, watch. 
if these two sides are equal, what does it tell you about these two angles down here? They're equal. So I'm just rehashing what we already talked about, but what about that third side? Now watch. If these two right here are equal, then these two angles are equal. But what if this and this are also equal, right? So what angles are equal because of these two sides? This one here and this one here. You see that? So if this has one arc, what's this going to have? That's going to have one arc. And now, what's true about all the angles? They're all equal to each other. So we have a thing that says, and they just call it a theorem. They don't give it a name. All right, but here's just a theorem. Um, we'll call it the equilateral triangle theorem, okay? It's not called that in here, but that's what we'll call it. So if it's equilateral, equilateral, then it's what? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we started off with equal sides, right? So if it's equilateral, then it's equal what? Angular. Good. I just shortened this a little bit from what it says in the book. That makes it pretty easy, right? So if it's an equilateral triangle, then it's going to be equiangular, which means what? If all three sides are equal, then all three what? Sides. Angles angles are equal. I already said sides. If all three sides, if all three sides are equal, then all three angles are equal. We good? Let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Now, it goes both ways. If it's equilateral, then it's equiangular. We could also say if it's equiangular, right? If it's, uh, I'll just write it all out. We got time. If it's equiangular, then it's also what? Equilateral. Do you see how the if and the then if you switch them around, it's the same, right? So if it's equilateral, then it's equiangular. If you switch it around, okay, they call that the contrapositive, all right, just so that you know. Remember we had converse and all that? Actually, I'm lying. That's not true. They're still converses of each other. I'm thinking of something else. So sorry, I almost made a mistake. Um, here's another thing, another way you could write this. The book doesn't do it, but they'll do this. Um, if, wish these words weren't so long, if it's equilateral, actually, let's not even put the word if in there. You might see this, I don't think the book does this, but you might see this from time to time. You'll see this, like this arrow right there. Everybody see that? And what could we put? Equa angular. What does this mean? It means it goes both ways, right? So if the triangle has all equal sides, that means what? All the angles are equal. Or you go the other way. If all the angles are equal, then what? All the sides are equal. All right. So that's that's another way that you could see it written. And again, I don't. I'm looking at the book. I don't really see them writing it like that. Or sometimes they'll just put a single arrow like that. But I've seen double arrows a lot like that. Anyway, that's just something you could do. Uh, let's see. What's your homework for this? I, don't think, I think you do. 1 through 12 and 18 and 19. So let's take a look. You got your book open? Let's look at 1 through 12 and see what they're asking you to do. Section 4-3, or 4-4, sorry. So I don't know, 172 it's on. I'm not going to do all these for you, but let's get you started a little bit so you kind of get an idea of what they're going to ask you to do. Uh, let's use that triangle again. Just, just trying to draw this first picture. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's squeeze this in a little bit like that. Okay. And we got a line coming like this straight down. Oh, is that us already? I was not keeping my eye on the clock. 
Well, anyway, you can figure it out. <laughs> All right, so do your best. It's 1 to 12, 18 to 19. 1 to 12, 18 and 19 on section 4-4.